In this video, I'm going to talk about collision on the geometry. At some point, you're going to want to be able to take the floor section out of your level and you're going to want both visually a good representation of the level, but you'll probably want to be able to run around it as well. What happens when you import your mesh and how does Unreal generate the, the collision? And then how can we adjust it? If we look at, say, this wall section, and I show it in the uh, in the mesh viewer, then I can show the simple collision. What Unreal has done when it's loaded the mesh in, if you're using the defaults, it will generate a collision mesh for it. In this case, this collision mesh is a reasonable approximation of the collision that I would want on this object. In other words, you can't clip through the skirting board on this wall because this green area dictates the collision. And that means that if I'm playing in the game, I won't be able to push through this wall. The same is true of the floor. There is also collision on the floor. And if I step off the floor, I will fall. Let's look at another piece. So this is our two meter wall section and this has got quite a big overhang and if I show the collision you can see this is a pretty big box area and will stop the player getting too near the wall. This is fine for a first pass because it won't actually prevent me from getting around the level but it would be something that I would want to refine. If I look at the four meter section I will show you the simple collision again this was generated when it was loaded there are options under collision to build other forms of collision and to remove the collision entirely so if i remove this collision i can re replace it with a box and what it will do is it will literally scale a box to fit around the object for things like doorways if i show you the simple collision it won't be able to generate collision for concave surfaces. So let me explain what a convex and a concave surface is. And hopefully you can extrapolate this into 3D volumes. So I have here a regular polygon. It's got three sides. As I change the number of sides, it doesn't matter. This will still be a convex surface. So any regular polygon is a convex surface. What defines a surface as being convex is if you look at the internal angles, they must be below 180 degree. In other words, you can't have a reflex angle. If you have a reflex angle in the object, you have a concave object. If I look at this triangle, it doesn't matter how I move the points around this object will stay concave. If I draw a line from outside of this shape, passing through the shape, you'll see that the line will only ever go in and out once. And that again is very useful for defining whether a surface is concave or convex. If a line can pass in and out of a surface more than once, then it is concave, otherwise it's convex. So it doesn't matter where I move these points around, this will always be convex. With a rectangle, it doesn't matter where I move the points around as long as I keep them orthogonal, it will still be a convex surface. If I take this surface and I rotate it, it's still convex. The internal angles are below 180 degrees and if I try and pass a line through it, then that line will only go in and out once. So let's look at how we can make a surface concave. So if I take this vertex and I move it so that its internal angle gets to 180 degrees, you can see that I've made a triangle. And if I keep pushing this, you can see that we get some artifacting, but more importantly, you'll see that this changes. This angle, is now over 180 degrees. It's a reflex angle. And if I was to draw a line 
you can see that the line would go in and out of this surface twice. So therefore, this surface is concave. If I extrude out of this surface, you can also see that I can generate reflex angles. And again, if I drew a line and it went in and out of the surface more than once, it would be concave. So what I've created here is the cavity. This is what makes this surface concave. This door frame is concave. It has this huge, big hole section. Uh, and if I stuck a pin through this, you could see that it would go in and out here and in and out here. So therefore, this is definitely a concave surface. The collision that Unreal puts around the objects are always convex. And that is, if you put a pin through the collision, you'll see that it will only go in and out once. So if I use this collision, the character wouldn't be able to get through the doorway. There's a couple of fixes for this. The easy fix is to set the collision to be no collision. And what this does is it means that I can pass completely through the geometry. I can actually just walk through this geometry without a problem because it doesn't have any collision on it. If we look at this main corridor section, it again, this is a concave shape. And if I show the simple collision, you will see that it maps straight on to the surfaces. So in other words, what it's done is it's uh, created a flat collision surface for every triangle. This is very, very expensive and we don't get to do this in games, or at least we don't get to do it very often. The way that I have done this is I have set the collision complexity. Normally this will be set project default. And you can see that if I set it to the project default, it goes back to this convex collision shell. Uh, instead, what I've got is use complex collision as simple. And the complex collision is all of the individual surfaces. So you'll see when I play, what can happen is I actually butt up against this surface. In summary, you should now understand how Unreal generates collision when you import objects. If the collision isn't right, you can reset or remove the collision, or you can try other collision volumes. You can set a model so it either doesn't have any collision on it, or so that the model only uses complex collision, which means that every surface has collision on it.